and welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that is so totally dreamy, but the technology usually isn't. Now, you'd have thought that the board game wing of the toy industry would have learned its lesson from all those video cassette based games they were putting out. Famous, Famous person. person. Two words. Two words. First word. Gun. Shoot. Aim. Trap. Aim. Aims. But they didn't. So today, I guess pretty much by default, we're going to take a look at audio cassette based games. And because I haven't embarrassed myself in quite a while now, I guess I have to try and play one, don't I? Of course it would be this one. <laughs> this box is empty. Before we begin, let me note that today's show does not deal with flipsiders, read games that looked like cassettes but unfolded into a small board game, nor does it deal with audio cassette only games, read games meant to be played in the car. Still not sure how I feel about that idea. Anyway, getting down to business, I guess the ties between media and home games were inevitable. As far back as the 1930s, home games based on radio programs were beginning to pop up, so it would only be logical that the games themselves would ultimately tie back into various media formats. As discussed before here on the Archive, Parker Brothers got that ball rolling in 1985 with the release of the VCR-oriented edition of the classic board game Clue. The same year, the British company, Spears' Games, issued, to the best of my research anyway, the first audio cassette based board game, Go Fetch It. This game's tape gave each player instructions to be carried out as they were given in real time. The following year saw the release of Listening to Nature, in which you identified the sounds of various animals on the tape. So exciting. And another notable game was 1991's MC Hammer's Wraparound, in which players would face off with each other, with cassette backing, in an epic rap battle. But alas, no one could compete with the sheer majesty of the MC Hammer game, and the very concept of cassette games died a sudden death shortly thereafter. Now, the cassette-based game I have, hence this ad, bends the formula a bit. Instead of having the cassette effectively dictate the proceedings, this particular game, and the associated speaker, allow for things to happen somewhat more at random, but we'll get to that a little later. And I'd love to go. Boys! New Dateline, from the makers of Girl Talk. Oh sure, there were games out there with audio cassette instructions, but those are no fun. One effigy filled with sand. Other two contained bodies of Whoop Ti Doo and Sun. Number three, Whoop Ti Doo stabbed with elegant sword of ancient lineage. Generally. Um, this one's empty too. Damn it. It's just a shell of a game. Anyway, uh, this is from a series called How to Host a Murder, and seriously, how can you hate a game called Who Hung Woo? Everything about this is just one big pun, by the way. And indeed, rest easy knowing that this was Vincent Price's favorite game. Um, we're not going to play this one. We can't play this one, largely because it would take eight people to do so, and Ed's not even here today, so I'm truly flying solo. But even more important than that is the fact that I don't consider this a true audio cassette game. I mean, it has to be audio cassette based, not just a tape with the instructions and some basic info on it. So I just thought I'd share that with everyone. Anyway, uh, before we get to girl talk here, finally, um, I, I normally don't do social and political commentary here on the archive, but I feel like I should with this one, and largely because when I was doing a little research on this game, it just 
rubbed it in that much more that this political correctness stuff has really gotten out of hand. I mean, I, of course, did a couple of dry runs with this, so I don't look like a total idiot when I play it, but I, I went looking for some other reviews and stuff, and there was one that just really crawled up my ass, and it came from some woman who claimed to have had it as a kid and played it again as an adult. She held on to it, and no reason not to believe her there. But um, she just lambasts this game for perceived forced gender roles and a lack of sensitivity to the gay, bisexual, etc. community. And, well, let me just give my little response to that. It's a f***ing board game! Seriously, folks. This isn't going to sway anybody one way or another in any way, shape, or form. It's a freaking board game, and the people that made it, I don't think they were trying to be judgmental. I think they were just trying to appeal to the widest spectrum of, in this case, what, maybe 9- to 14-year-old girls? Big deal. So, gain a little perspective, people. Anyway, if I had a mic, I'd drop it right now. I mean, well, I do, but I'm not disconnecting it. Anyway, let's get started, huh? And so here we are with my very, very tight setup, and it's it's already a bit problematic. I have cables running all over the place, and it's just not a very fun game either. There's a lot of parts to it, a lot of stuff that goes wrong, and uh, we're only going to get through maybe a few minutes of gameplay here, because it would take a couple hours to get through a game and the instructions are really vague, and, and it's trying to come to the end of the game, sometimes just flat out does not happen. This is going to be my fourth time playing this thing, and I have yet to actually be able, yet to be able to finish a whole game. So, what we've got here is our game board, a couple of little players, and a bunch of different cards in different various slots, and we've got this guy. The Girl Talk Dateline Phone and you stick two cards in the slot, and if you get a decent combination as far as the inside of this is concerned, you might actually hear a conversation. Problem is, uh, is that the sound is very, very bad out of this thing, and this is only a mono plug, which would make sense, you wouldn't really need stereo for this, but these plugs don't always work with more recent electronics, so like even my circa 2002 cassette Walkman would not take this. I tried to burn the cassette for this game to CD and cut down on the wear and tear and run it from my Discman. Didn't happen. Tried to run it out of my stereo. Didn't happen. And so the only thing that works here is my dad's old hand-me-down dictaphone, hand-me-down to me, and this thing's from sometime in the 80s, so at least it's period appropriate, I guess. And uh, the whole point of this game, it doesn't tell you if you need to hand out girl cards or boy cards or whatever, but I figured the basic concept of this is to try and find dates for your friends and ultimately one for yourself, and they assume you're a girl playing this, so I handed out all girl cards. Everybody gets three eligible bachelorette friends that you need to try and hook up for starters. And ultimately, make a date for yourself in the most generic way possible with nice chewed up labels and all that. So, uh, let's say hi to our eligible bachelorettes, huh? Let's say hi to Lindsay, huh? Uh, Lindsay loves MTV and dancing and hates homework and doing the dishes. And then we've got Stacy, who loves talking on the phone and shopping and hates greasy hair and book reports. And lastly, for player one, let's say hi to Jamie, who loves stuffed animals and cute boys and hates snobs and zits. And for player two, let's say hi to Tina, who loves pizza and makeup, hopefully not together, and hates computers and report cards. And then we'll say hi to Danielle, who loves perfume and pep club and hates getting up early, and she's looking a little faded today. And lastly, we'll say hi to Nicole, who loves summer vacation and romance stories and hates term papers. And the likes and dislikes of these things have no bearing on anything else. It, it more comes down to, can you get two cards together that come together in a configuration that the speaker likes? So, 
why don't we uh, check in with my good friend Tracy here, and maybe she can help us fill in the blanks here. Maybe. Tracy? Tracy? You there? Tracy? Hi, my name's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Are you ready to play Girl Talk Dateline? Sure. <laughs> first things first, stop the tape and make sure to read all the rules of the game. Go ahead, I'll wait. And hopefully you're a very quick reader. If you already know how to play the game, well, that's cool. Roll the dice and begin the fun. Be sure to keep the tape player running. I'll be talking to you later. Bye. So we'll crank the crap out of this because it has to be blaring for the speaker to work. The speaker's a piece of junk, and we're going to have fun with this sucker, I tell you. Let's just get going here. Player one, two, right out of the gate, blind dates. So uh, we'll draw a boy card, I guess, and uh, we'll say hi to Brad, who loves surfing and James Dean and hates gossip and small talk. And we'll try and hook him up with Stacy. This might not work because they're awfully similar. In fact, let's try something else. Let's try Lindsay. See if we get anything. Oh, we got sound. We just have to wait for the next call to come around. Eventually. It's a really riveting game. Oh. Hello? Hi, how are you? Hey, beautiful. How did I know you were going to call? Oh, gee. I don't know. Well, what's up? I've got this game show on TV. It just won't wait. Well, I... I, I called to find out if you'd like to go to the dance with me Friday night. The dance? Why, I'd love to. Great. But I'm going with someone else. Sorry. What a turkey! Oops, no match here. Pass the die to the next player and go for it. And right out of the gate we got a problem. These cards get stuck. So when that happens, sometimes you get two cards in there that just will not work with each other, and you have to actually go in there, and I had to make some of these, these little paper sticks, to stick in there, wedge in there, and hit just right to get them to release. But I've only got one stuck, so you usually just take one of another gender and just keep trying until you get one that will make the initial card release, just like that. So... We'll give that one back. And we'll give that one back. Hopefully you weren't reading. Let's let have player two. Let have player two. Let have player two have a let shot. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So when you land on one of these spaces, you're supposed to draw from one of these little bins with the corresponding number. So we've got number two here, so let's say hi to Kirk, who loves kung fu movies and hates tests and dressing up. So let's hook him up with Tina. See what happens. Hello? Hi, it's me from your math class. Oh, sure. How are you doing? Great, except for one thing. I'm having a little trouble with next week's assignment. Well, look no further. Mr. Math is at your service. Really? You'll help me? Well, I'll be glad to. Uh, but there's just one catch. Yes? Go out with me Saturday night? It's a deal. Well, great. <sighs> that sounded almost like a bride, didn't it? But they made a date. Well, as garbled as that was, it works. And, of course, I have another one that's stuck. Oh well, there's one, and the whole idea is to make dates for all your friends, which could be in upwards of maybe 10 couples, and ultimately find a date for yourself. I may have mentioned this already, but actually getting to that point in the game has never happened for me yet. 
uh, you seem to just kind of run out of steam. You, you run out of cards that are compatible because only certain types of these things are actually compatible. And every time I've played and I've gotten that far, it's gotten to the point where anyone that would be compatible with your make a date card doesn't work. So I'm actually going to pull the plug on the gameplay here and we'll just try a couple little things. So I just wanted to close things out here with the results of some little experiments I've done on this thing, and I, I especially wanted to refute that woman's claims with that blog that this game is not gay-friendly, because I have found it that it is more or less gay-friendly. I mean, uh, I found these two, did a little snooping around, and uh, Scott and Eric, I mean, they seem like a nice couple, right? We'll, uh, we'll let the game speak for itself. I don't know what they mean, and indeed, in the name of equal time, I have found a couple of nice ladies that work well together, Tanya and Allison, and uh, again, we'll let the game speak for itself. Just wait for the next call to come around. Hello? Hi there. Oh, Tanya has a little bit of a deep voice. Gee, I don't know. All those authors and all those poems. <laughs> uh, it can't be that bad. I have an idea that'll make studying for the quiz a breeze. You got a copy of the quiz and we're going to study the answers? <laughs> nice try. My parents are driving me to the beach Saturday. We could go over the English stuff while we soak up the rays. Now that sounds like an idea. I'd love to go. But what time? We'll pick you up around 10. See you then. Yeah. Oh, all right. I so, um... <sighs> Great. Excuse me a second. women. Anyway, I have found this game to be more or less gay friendly. I mean, the only time I have had a problem is with these two, Stephanie and Generic Make a Date. For whatever reason, when I stick them in together, it completely jams the whole thing up and I have to get in there with a folded up piece of paper and hit it just right to get it out. But, you know, it, it works. And indeed, this game, I mean, you don't have to play it with this stupid cassette. You can play this with anything you want. And, um, indeed, let me show you. I mean, you can play this with ACDC, you can play this with Michael Jackson, Richard Thompson, uh, Arlo Guthrie, or, uh, even Annette Funicello. You can play this game with Annette freaking Funicello here. Well, um, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time as we do more board game stuff, and I continue to fight to get these damn cards out of the slot. I'm only half joking, by the way. Hello, Pablo Sauce of Tacos, can I help you? Hi. Hello? Uh, oh, I mean, hi. What do you want? Oh, I just thought I'd call to see how you're doing. And I've got something to ask you. Uh, well, ask away. I've got people here waiting for tacos. Want to come over tomorrow night for dinner? There'll be six of us. Well, what are you having? Tacos. What? I can't hear you. Tacos. Speak up. Tacos! Are you kidding? Call me when you decide to go Italian. The two things girls like best, talking on the phone and... I'd love to go. Boys! Boys.